from our own politicians. This is the whole, you know, NSA spying thing. Now, the White House was afraid, the administration was afraid that they were going to kind of get caught with their pants down uh, when it came to spying on their own members of government. And, and now it has come out, the Wall Street Journal reported that the NSA monitoring of uh, such exchanges, it just it scared the bejesus out of them. They were like, oh, wow, what are we going to do? Um, the, they're calling it the enhanced monitoring of Benjamin Netanyahu. It's not so much Israel. Now, Obama has had a hate-hate relationship with Israel, with Netanyahu, since he first came on the national stage. I don't know what his beef is. Uh, maybe it's because of the, where he was raised and his Muslim upbringing. I'm not saying he's a Muslim. I don't think he's anything. He's just a politician. But for him to now, again, spit in the face of Israel, in my opinion, spit in the face of Netanyahu, and be on the international stage and being caught Focus on ISIS, man. Look what's going on out there. They're killing Christians. They're, they're killing some Muslims as well. They're trying to uh, take over um, Syria. They're, they're just on a war path there. They'd like to do it here if they could. And you're worried about what your best friend in the region is doing. Because you, you really what were trying to get him. What the thing was here, Obama was trying to get... Uh, Netanyahu not to be elected. He didn't want him reelected, and he sent a, a contingent of people over there. Part of them uh, worked for his 2008 election campaign, and they were trying to sabotage the man because they did not want him to be prime minister. Now, if Israel turns their back on us, which they never will, they've got too much class to do that, and they need us, we need them. Um, I don't think we realize how much we do need them. Uh, we're going to be screwed in the Middle East. Um, uh, truly, and, and yet he gets in bed with Iran, gives them 150 billion of your money, uh, and now the firing on our ships. Your calls, your opinions. We come back. Eight five five four hundred Savage. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. You're listening to the Michael Savage Show. Remember, check out michaelsavage.com. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855 400 Savage. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate here with you in for Dr. Savage, uh, taking your calls, 855-400-SAVAGE. Uh, we're talking about a bunch of things that are going on. Uh, the U.S. spying on Israel reportedly ensnares members of Congress. The U.S. says Iran tested rockets 1,500 yards from an American carrier. And if you think the issue of ISIS and terrorism um, is not a problem, uh, on michaelsavage.com, check out the article about the London couple who was uh, convicted of uh, plotting attacks on uh, their home soil there. Let's get to the phones. Uh, John on uh, WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? All right. And you know what? First of all, there's nothing wrong with this country that 100 million Americans singing onward Christian soldiers couldn't fix. Now, you brought up the Grand Concourse before, and that hits home because, for me, that's where it all began. And it is. The Bronx now is a third-world country and they get the best Cadillac benefits, welfare benefits anywhere through the state of New York and through the city of New York, and everyone in the country pays for this. Now, because everyone here is in tune to what's going on, this great audience understands what I'm going to say. But you've got to realize the people who want to destroy this country are not talking to us. They're talking to the people who have no clue. I have a, I've looked at it closely now, and I'm telling you, Every enemy of America has their people inside America, and no matter what goes on, no matter what takes place, if it's a terrorist attack, a tragedy, a criminal act, the borders swing wide open in this country. That is the agenda, no matter what happens. People have to ra realize refugee status gives you every, gives you the whole smorgasbord of welfare benefits in this country. And I didn't hear Republicans in 2001, on 9-11, right after 9-11, when George Bush let thousands upon thousands of Afghan refugees inside America, folks, it's up to you because it is your country. Remember those key phrases. It's your country. Hey, John, just quickly, I want to ask you a question. When you said the people who want to destroy this country, I actually thought you were talking about our politicians in Washington, D.C., and the Obama administration, because as Dr. Savage covers in uh, Government Zero, no borders, no language, no culture, uh, it, 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 he, he lays out how they're trying to bring down this nation. 
Well, obviously, they're transforming it. Anybody could want to destroy this country. They don't have to be a terrorist. They might, they might to me, illegal aliens who vote in our elections are overthrowing my government. They have no right to be voting in my election, but they're going to tell me who my elected officials are going to be, right? So exactly. Well, that's because the they're with the amnesty programs, and that's on both sides. You've got Obama, you've got now Paul Ryan, you've got Trey Gowdy, you've got Rubio, um, and even George W. Bush. They all wanted their amnesty because you know you know what? When the when floodgates open and these people uh, come here, John, uh, they're not going to live next door to them. They're not going to destroy their neighborhoods. Well, you know what the thing is. I want to hear about what 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 you what you told him. But thanks for your call, there, John. We don't want we don't want to bring up the the other guys. You know, we we don't want to bring up the followers. We want we want to keep it here uh, with the Savage Nation. Again, eight five five four hundred Savage. Lou Pate in for the doctor. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Mark again on WABC. Now, Mark, remember, political correctness is domestic terrorism. I say it all the time. What do you what do you think? Yeah, yeah, you're talking about. Uh, spying on Netanyahu, but you don't bring up the point where we had John Kapala spying for Israel, who actually single handedly destroyed every CIA informant in the Middle East. Every day they're spying on us. Pollock, Pollock is Pollock is an excellent reference, but, you, but I think you're missing the point. The point is, is that this wasn't your traditional spying. This was an attempt to bring down the prime minister of Israel. That's what it was. It was like a coup d'etat without the bullet. Oh, I mean, come on. You, you don't think APAC has a strong influence on our politicians? I'm I mean, not saying they don't, but I'm just saying is that uh, Obama sent a contingent of people over there, and they were eavesdropping on Netanyahu. Let's face it. Do you think he likes Israel? Do you think he likes Netanyahu? Yes, he has to like Israel. He has no, no. No, you don't have to do anything doesn't have to like them. They're our ally. He should work with them. He certainly doesn't like them. I mean, he's been nothing but disrespectful to the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, uh, since there were times he came here. When he was here in March and he gave that historic speech on the Hill, Obama wouldn't even meet with him. He, he hid behind some, oh, it's an election in Israel garbage, and we don't meet with the leaders when they're up for re-election. Meanwhile, he's trying to not get him re-elected. That's what this whole spying thing is all about. This is not your traditional Cold War spying, Mark. That's what's troubling about it. If Israel walks away from us, where what foothold could we ever have in the Middle East? Because right now this administration's afraid to fight ISIS. They're they're lucky that uh, Al Qaeda is is weakened, but Al Qaeda is regrouping and they are getting strong too. And it's it's only a matter of time before we have more San Bernardinos here. All right, Mark. Well, thanks for your call. Do appreciate it. Um, Al on uh, WFTW in Florida. Welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Hey, good afternoon. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, ISIS could attack Disney World uh, and, and kill thousands without firing a single shot. All they need to do is infect a dozen people with uh, smallpox, wait until they start showing active symptoms, send them into the park, walk right through the front gate, pay your fee, and, and spend the day having fun riding the rides, uh, waiting in line, bumping up against all those people, by the time America, by the time this country figured out what had happened, it would be too late. You'd have thousands, if not tens of thousands, of people infected. You'd have loose vacationers who are already exposed to smallpox back in their hometowns, going uh, coming up with active symptoms and exposing more people. It would be a national disaster, uh, the likes of which we've probably never seen before. I'll tell you why they so, can't do that, Al. I'll tell you why they, I mean, they can do it. I'll tell you why they won't do it. The reason is this. They don't get credit for it. It's not grandiose. It's not, it's not like the Paris attacks. They're blowing up a bomb outside a soccer stadium. They're massacring people at a heavy metal concert. Um, it, it's, it's not flamboyant. They, they want the headlines. You know, they're, they're egomaniacs as much as they are psychopaths. And that's what they go for. If if they start a plague and it kills a million people, yeah, they've killed a million people. And even if they take credit, no one's going to actually believe it 100%, except for those on the intelligence side who know what they did. 
you you jump the gates of anywhere and you start shooting people. You've got video, you've got cell phones coming out, you've got people making phone calls, texts, social media plays a part. It's it's all about the presentation as much as it is about the killing. It's not just about killing, it's about making a statement, Al. Do you see? What would happen to business in this country if everybody in this country had to worry about getting exposed to something like that in public? It would be a disaster, and oh, ISIS would take take credit for it, and they could prove it. All they need to do is track the biology of the strain. It's no All problem. Right, Al. Well, Al, I appreciate your call, but I'm going to tell you why you're wrong, because if you don't think that you have to worry about your safety here in the United States, I am not fear-mongering, okay? It's happened already. Look at San Bernardino. Look at... Um, uh, uh, in Paris, n- not just the first, not just the the last uh, terrorist attack. Look at what they did to the, the journalist and the cartoonist, the Charlie Hebdo, um, earlier in the year. Um, it it is truly an amazing phenomenon. Um, and now, what are we looking at down the road? We have Obama. Obviously, the clock is ticking on his administration. Okay, and what's going to come down the road? Is it going to be a President Trump? Is it going to be uh, a President Rubio? And uh, or is it going to be a President Hillary? Which, in many ways, could be worse than we have it now. Let me cite for you, in Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture, Dr. Savage's latest book, um, Chapter 2, Leadership Post-Obama. This will hit close to home. Bear with me here. We don't know who the Republican nominee is going to be yet, but it still doesn't look like any of the candidates can beat the limber leopard, Hillary Clinton. I called her that in my 2005 book, The Political Zoo, because in addition to being willing and able to change her spots at any time, she has a strength the current president lacks. Unfortunately, she's on the wrong side. She could bring stronger leadership in the wrong direction than we have right now. She may have attended school. She may not have not attended school in an Indonesia madrasa, but she's been making friendly with the Muslim groups since the mid-1990s. The president is supposed to be responsible for the actions of his cabinet. But do you really believe the academic in chief has any control over the limber leopard? Clinton has been siding with the Muslims since before Obama was even a community organizer. It's a good thing she's not associating with those intolerant, bigoted conservatives. Her husband shares her affinity for the throwbacks. Wolf Boy, Bill Clinton, actually called for the arrests of the cartoonists at the Jalad Bastin, that's a Danish newspaper, um, after the riots over their satires of Mohammed and Muslims. Never mind punishing the rioters and the murderers. Wolf Boy wants to arrest the cartoonists for exercising their right to free speech. And, and that is one of the things that, that, that is truly baffling when it comes to the left. They pretend to care about women. They pretend to care about gays. They pretend to care about all of the rights for all of the people. Yet, they side with the Muslims all the time who are against everything... <laughs> Everything that liberals say they stand for, and I say say they stand for because they just say the words. They don't uh, truly stand for that. Uh, let's get back to the phones, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Gary on WABC. Welcome, Gary, to the Savage Nation. All right, great show. And I'll tell you what, this is how we got to do it. you got to get all the word out, all the information out. I remember 15 years ago I said you had two choices for president. You can vote for Patriot, Jay Buchanan, or you can kiss the country goodbye. The people elected to kiss the country goodbye. And uh, unfortunately, I just see it where the, the borders are so wide open and millions of people are coming in here. I don't think surveillance is going to really be effective anymore because how do you surveil, do surveillance on three, four 400, 500 million people inside a, a country? And I don't think the terrorists just want to do terror. To populate Europe. America, Australia, and take over with just pure, pure numbers, and that'll be the way it'll be, and they'll tie down America like the giant in Gulliver's Travel who couldn't get up. Gary, I say it all the time, and I'll say it again. I'll say it throughout this show. Political uh, political correctness is domestic terrorism, and that's what the liberals in this country take part in. Political correctness ad nausea, and they are either too ignorant or too stupid to realize that 
what they say and the actions of the people that they defend, in this case, Muslim terrorists, it's a conflict of interest. You cannot have both. You cannot say, oh, oh, be tolerant of them. It's their religion. It's a fringe group. It's a rogue group of their religion. And, and then when you, you read um, even the FBI saying they get zero cooperation,